we're recreating the Apple header pretty close inside of Divi. All right, everybody, so we're here. We're in the back end of WordPress. You can see <coughs> we're going to walk you real through. Excuse me. We're going to walk you through really quick um, kind of the versions that we're using before we jump into this video. And we've already created the outline, um, the layout. The, it's a global header. And then we'll show you kind of around how we set it up and what that looks like. So you can see here in the bottom right-hand corner, we're running version 5.3.2 of WordPress. And then we'll come into the themes and we'll show you the version of Divi that we're using, which is the latest as of today, um, as of January. No, actually it's February 1st. I'm not even sure which month it is, but February 1st. This is the latest version. We are version 4.2.2 of Divi. And again, running WordPress version 5.3.2. So um, you'll find here um, in the description below, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find the link to be able to get the actual file for the Divi theme builder. So what we're gonna do here is come over to this portability. That's to export, right? So we need to import this. We're gonna go over here, go to import and select the file uh, that we've already made. So if we're at the front, uh, I believe I call this, yes, Apple style header and footer. Uh, we're just going to import that file <clears throat> into the website that we have now. Once it's imported, we'll go ahead and save. But before I save, I want to show you the current version of the website, which is using just the basic Divi header. And you'll see, you know, it's got the logo, it's got the basic menu, and this is as uh, familiar to you as any if you've been using Divi for a while. <clears throat> But we've gone ahead and imported this. So this default website template is set up with the header and the footer. We're going to save changes. And let's go and show you the finished product first. So now that this is saved, we're going to refresh the front page and the header is going to change, right? So this is a fixed header. So when you scroll, it's going to stay. The menu you assign um, is going to be done, obviously, inside of the theme builder, but everything is meant to be centered in the page. So there's some flex classes and some custom code that was done here, but the really cool thing, right, and I want to show you uh, as I drag this thing down to mobile size, is the menu is going to jump to the bottom whenever, um, whenever you go to mobile or to tablet, and it opens up. Now, for some reason in Chrome on the desktop, it opens up as a half, uh, taking up 50%. But I've done it on my phone using Chrome uh, on an Android. It definitely takes up the whole page. Not sure uh, exactly what's going on here with it on a smaller version of desktop Chrome, but on the phone, it definitely reacts the way I wanted it to react, which is to scroll up and take up almost the full width of the mobile page. So the other idea here is that this custom sign up can be managed across different pages. So if we go back into the theme builder, you can add another template <clears throat> and you can include it on specific pages. So let's say for the blog page, we wanted the own, its own template, right? Right now we could add a custom body or we can actually customize this footer, which I'm sorry, it would be the header and the header sits at the bottom. Um, you could customize that button specifically on this page. So if it was sign up for new notifications, you could do that specifically on there where it could be, you know, get notified, hit the button, pop up, you know, with a Divi overlay or with a new page where people can sign up for your newsletter. <clears throat> if it was a podcast page, you could change that button to subscribe and make it go to a page where people can subscribe to your podcast, uh, whether it's a landing page that lists everywhere that you're, podcast is played or if it's specifically to like Apple or Google Podcasts, you could do something like that. And with that, you would just shrink it down. And when you shrink it down, this whole thing adjusts, right? So then we can go here, we can change this to um, stay in touch. We can change the link to whatever it would be, you know, I'm just going to put this here for now. Um, it would depend on where you want the end result to go. And then you would just hit save. So we'll save down in the bottom right hand corner. <clears throat> 
And as soon as that's saved, you can close out. We'll hit save. So I think what we might have just done was adjust the actual global header. So you'll want to do what I just did here as well. So this will be a custom version of that header. And let me go into this actual grid because I want to show you there's a few things, right? This is the desktop menu and this section down here is the tablet and the mobile, um, the mobile menu. And you can tell under advanced and the visibility, it's hidden on desktop, but it's gonna show on the tablet, it's going to show on the phone. And then the code that we've put in place here, this code shows up on the whole page and this is specifically uh, for some filters, some filter effects. You know, we wanna make sure that <clears throat> the icons reveal on, on um, <laughs> excuse me I want to make sure that the icons and the pages collapse on mobile so what we've done in that is that um, you know Divi it doesn't collapse the the sub menu so if you have um, services as a main menu and then underneath it you have the different pages for individual services uh, those would show up all in line just normal by Divi so we put code in here to collapse the the mobile versions to where there's a, an icon to expand it uh, just a better user experience more collapse less to read through uh, I think it works out very 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 well you know, and there's no code over here, but we've got everything kind of in place. So that's the way we would do it. You would save the, um, you'll save the page here. And if you wanted to duplicate onto other pages, you would simply come over here and say, you know, specific pages. Um, maybe let's go to uh, all projects. So projects in Divi are typically client pages. We can create a tip, uh, template for them. You'll go over to this menu, disable the global, that way it's a custom header specifically for these pages. And then here we could go in, and a good one for portfolio would be work with us. Um, you know, and maybe that's a contact page for, for clients, some, pay, some place where they can go and fill out a form to start working with you. That would be the perfect scenario for this. So we'd go down into the mobile version, the button shows up, you can change the text here to work with us change the link to whichever page you know if it's just a contact page you can do that hit save uh, you can either command s which will save the page automatically or you can go down to the save button in the builder as soon as that's saved you can close out these things so now we've got um, basically the same header but we've got different calls to action on individual pages the thing I will say is that once you build your global header, uh, if you do ever go back to change these, you would have to um, you'd have to change them on each individual page, or you would have to delete the headers on this page, add the header, and then use custom header, disable the global again to where you get the newest version of the global header, and then go in and make the individualized changes again. So that's a good uh, good pro tip. I mean, it's something you definitely need to keep in mind. If you change the global header and do different things with the design and you want it to look uniform throughout your site, you definitely have to go back and do that step. So with that, you know, we would save changes and we'll go to the projects page real quick and a blog page because I, I, I think they're, I think they all exist here. So <clears throat> let's go into the blog page. Here it says stay in touch. Let's say we go back home. Remember we changed the global one here also to say stay in touch and you can see there's this animation that we've put on there to where it flows up once the page loads it looks really cool and we've also got the spacing in place here to push um, the actual margin of the bottom so that everything aligns just right uh, let's go double check in the back end to see if we have a projects page i'm not sure if in this demo site i have a project page but if we don't we can probably make one really really quickly and we can do that in the theme builder <clears throat> so what I would do is all projects. Um, let's go back here and see if we have any projects in place. There is none, so that's okay. We'll go ahead and we'll just we'll just create something as just a test. Test project, and we're just going to publish the page. It'll have no content in it. That's okay. It doesn't matter. What we want to see is work with us in the main um, menu, right? So we've got stay in touch here. Let's go back. The blog says stay in touch. 
Yep. So what we need to do, we've got this all projects. Let's make sure this is changed. And then we'll go, I mean, make sure that it's saved. And we'll go back into here one more time, back into the all projects. Let's go down into this version. Change the button. It says stay in touch because we deleted it and brought the other one back. So work with us. Slash contact. And then we'll save this page. And we'll show you the difference of what things look like on mobile. So let's close this out, save these changes one more time. We'll go back to the front and we'll jump back into the front page. <clears throat> let's do the inspect piece here. And we're going to make it mobile. And you'll be able to see, you know, pretty good here. So we've got this page, right? We're at the home page. It says stay in touch. We're going to go into the blog page. And it still says stay in touch, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's go under our projects and we will view this test project. So let's go ahead, hit the inspect again to where it shows down in mobile and you'll see this button says work with us. So this is a twofold uh, tutorial. You've gonna, you're gonna get the download for the, for the header which is cool, it's a custom header. It looks cool, but one feature that I love about it is that whenever you scroll over, we've got that blurred glass effect, which I just think looks, <laughs> looks pretty dang sick. Like, it looks awesome. So, the footer's gonna come with it too. It's just a simple three column footer. Uh, you can adjust that however you see fit inside of the Divi Theme Builder, uh, and then going into the global footer. You can change it right here. Make it look however you want. That's completely up to you, but we just wanted to provide you with this really cool layout. I think it's I think it's great, and I'll show you on on our website, KeganLanierMedia.com, um, exactly what this looks like with a full-on menu. So we've got these, and let's jump in here, and we'll show you the page. <clears throat> I'll need to log out to where this all aligns because the align the. It pushes down the page with the, the spacing from the actual admin bar. The admin bar always kind of gets in the way a little bit. So we'll show you, we'll show you this. This is what, a, what it looks like. And as we scroll through, you know, it definitely just uh, blurs in the background. I think it looks super awesome. It's uh, exactly what the, uh, what the Apple website has in line. It's, it's pretty much the same exact work. Um, I just wanted to do it inside of Divi and um, just make it look a little bit unique and not Divi-like, but I wanted to provide you guys with a cool, cool menu. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get a lot out of it. Don't forget that the link is down below in the description if you're watching here on YouTube. And um, yeah, before you get out of here, I'd love it. If this video was great, smash the like button. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more tutorials just like this. We will be putting out a lot over the year. We've got a number goal we want to hit, and we're going to uh, multiply that up a little bit so that we can feel really good at the end of the year about the content we've brought to you. So thanks again. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.